returning for the Irish. And the most experienced player for Liel Ivy's young Irish squad. She led the team in scoring last season at 15 points per game. She will need to hit shots on the offensive end tonight and play some defense to get the Irish into transition. So Haley Brown didn't waste any time for Michigan, put up the three-point attempt. So Notre Dame with a lot of new faces from last year, including the young lady with the ball, Dara Mabry, who played her first two years at Virginia Tech and is the third Mabry sister to play for the Irish. And you see already Michigan's looking to trap Mabry on pick and roll situations, using their size to come out and try to turn her over, make her give the ball up. That was one of the concerns was the, the length difference. You took, take a look at the starting five for Michigan. And Kenray Johnson, good to see her back in the lineup. She missed their last game with a nagging soreness in her knee, the knee that she has torn the ACL in twice, but she is back for the Wolverines. Notre Dame coached by Niel Ivey, the uh, former assistant coach and also won a championship as a player. You see Ma Mabry, Prohaska, who missed all of last year, Peoples Walker, and Maddie Westbelt, who is Pat Westbelt's younger sister. And Westbelt has really come on strong, even as a true freshman. Boy, she is strong, has a college body. You can move her all around the floor. She can score from anywhere, can rebounding, just has a complete skill set. And I believe she may have just picked up her first foul, so Danielle Ivey's going to make an early substitution. And that has been a concern, the foul trouble that Notre Dame got into, particularly in their first game, which was an upset loss. They fell to Ohio, came back with a nice bounce back win against Miami of Ohio to even a record at one apiece. And turnovers really crushed Michigan in their game last year. 32 points scored off turnovers by the Irish. And they turned him over here. Mabry left all alone for three, and that's just what she does. And really good ball movement by Notre Dame. Their half-court offense is still a work in progress. Neil Ivey has not had her entire roster available to her. They've been better in transition, but if they move the ball, they've got enough offensive weapons to get good shots. And so far, their zone defense and taking away Nas Hillman is working and getting them into transition. Peoples with the basket, so points off turnovers again for the Fighting Irish. Michigan has taken two shots. They have not held on to the basketball, which was one of their priorities. Hillman there, she is double zero in the maze and blue, but she's being blanketed. Two players automatically come over, and Hillman able to score over the double. Well, this is what Kim Barnes-Rico was expecting for Notre Dame to play a zone, to try to take away Hillman. The challenge is once she catches it, she's going to find an angle to score. You have to try to deter the passer from getting her the basketball to begin with. And once she gets it, it's pretty much lights out. Welcome to the new season, Sam Brunel. Was that early substitution that LaChina talked about and Brunel missed the first Couple of games, had a little nagging foot injury, has not gone 100% yet at practice, but was cleared to play today and hit her first shot. And that was the second leading scorer last year behind Walker for the Irish. And a driving shot, Amy Dilk gets the bucket. Yeah, Dilk just kind of created something out of nothing, and she has that ability at six foot at the point guard position. Doesn't look for her shot aggressively, but she can score. Yeah, you're right, good length at 6'10". She was honorable mention, all Big Ten last year. Had a terrific game against Florida State just before Christmas last year, career high 26, and Michigan now starting to heat up. Last nice basket was by Leah Brown, very important component, number 32 in blue, the Nebraska transfer. Well, Mabry just puts it on the floor and blows by. That's classic Notre Dame offense in the half court. They like to put the ball at the high post and cut off that high post action and use their bigs in the middle of the floor to create offensive opportunities. We'll take another look here. Ooh, good screen there by Brunel. She is the facilitator then on the offensive end. Not with the ball in her hand, but as the screener. And the cut by Mabry wide open. 
Adara Jr. out of Belmar, New Jersey. Sam Brunel back playing for the Irish. Did not start today. It'll be interesting to see how many minutes Coach Ivy leaves her out there. Also in the game, that's Caitlin Gilbert. We weren't exactly sure who we might see for Notre Dame after talking to Danielle Ivy yesterday. She hadn't gotten full clearance on any of the players that had not yet hit the court. And Gilbert also in the game. This is huge for the Irish. Yeah, they're so much deeper than they were last year. They were down to seven scholarship players at one point in what turned out to be Muffet McGraw's 33rd and final season in charge of the Irish. Brahaska has it rim out. And Gilbert was listed as game to game. Both she and Brunel have indeed gotten in. And another turnover. Hillman gives it up for the third time in this game. Really Brahaska impressed. aggressive. Really impressed with Notre Dame's defense to start this game. They started the season against Ohio, really struggling in their man-to-man, -man, but their zone has looked good and very active in their last couple of contests. They crowded her. She's usually a little more patient and looking for the open man, but Notre Dame is frustrating her and Michigan very early. They have seven points off turnovers. That's all from their active defense. And three of those turnovers committed by Hillman, who only has two points. Again, coming off a career high 35 at Oakland, in which he had 19 of those points in the very first quarter. The Notre Dame's defense doing the job. Michigan, though, has made its last four field goals, trying to Settled down on the offensive end a little bit. Good defense by Gilbert to stuff the shot by Johnson. And then way outside. I don't know if Dara Mabry has a range. <laughs> That's her kind of shot right there. Around, <laughs> around the hash mark, Pam, when she's yep. feeling good. That's all go. That's a green light. Miles Hillman on the bench taking a, a rest. Midway through this first quarter, Pam Ward along with LaChina Robinson. This game coming your way from the Purcell Pavilion in South Bend. Family members are allowed, by the way, to attend games at Notre Dame. And good defense that time by the Wolverines. They get the ball back. The state of Michigan not allowing any fans. So there's quite a few kids on this Michigan team from Indiana, and their family members actually are able to see them play this year for the first time. Which is awesome, because guess what? These players have been on campus since the summer, so they have not seen their families. And even Kim Barnes Rico's family is not allowed into the facility. So her family is traveling on the road to see her, her first game that they've been able to see, the team for the first time. And yeah, her husband and what, she has three kids, all of whom play basketball, all of whom have had their seasons canceled. So making the uh, relatively short trip now to South Bend, Indiana. And again, uh, Amy Dilk from Carmel, Leah Brown is from Auburn, Indiana, Maddie Nolan from Zionsville, and all the Indiana players for Michigan having their family see them for the first time in this game. Nice drive and the finish for Peoples, who has a couple of buckets. Yeah, a lot of handoff action on offense for Notre Dame. It looks like Neil Ivey believes that they can blow by Michigan off of the bounce. Even the secondary defender there are testing them off the dribble. And the L.I. be telling us that she's still determining the best position in which to get her players to get their points as she takes over for the legendary Muffet McGraw who is in the studio with us tonight. And the L.I.B. had been an assistant. And there's Carol Owens behind her uh, uh, remaining on the staff. And Ivy with the Memphis Grizzlies last year, able to come back. And she told us she couldn't ever have imagined being the head coach at Notre Dame because she could never imagine Muffet not coaching there. That's right. I don't think any of us could ever imagine that. But here we are. And no one better to take over the reins of this program than Neil Ivy. She's been a part of all nine Final Four appearances, either as a player or as an assistant coach. Flanked by Carol Owens, as you mentioned, who recruited her to Notre Dame as a player. Um, Coquise Washington was her position coach at Notre Dame. And then Michaela Mabry, who played for the Irish. It's a family affair. I love it. Yep. There is a good look at Niel, was on that 2001 national championship team. Oh, boy, what a great team that was with Ruth Riley 
Among others, Kelly Seaman beat Purdue in the final in 01. A lot of off the ball movement by Notre Dame. I really like to see it in the half court. The Boy, better defense. challenge, Kaylee Brown. Good defense by the Canadian, the senior from Hamilton, Ontario. Well, this is what's happening. You, you get the switch or the help, either one, for Michigan. And Notre Dame's not afraid to take it inside. They are looking to challenge Michigan again with, with their dribble offense. That's a travel shifting feet by Amira Abdul Rahim, one of the five true freshmen on this team playing for Coach Ivy. She got a start in the last game, and yes, she is the little sister of Sharif who played in the NBA. Amira is the 11th of 13 children. Well, Pam, you already know what my family looks like. I'm one of 12, so we've got something in yeah. common. <laughs> the, the Abdul Rahims are one up on you, though. Finally, we found a family that could beat you. <laughs> Finally. Finally. Hillman on the glass, but another good defensive play by the Irish. Now Johnson. Gilbert looking to take that to the rim for Notre Dame, but go back to that last possession. And Brunel gets a piece of it. Nas Hillman looked like she finally had some daylight, but Brunel has done a nice job using her physicality on both ends of the floor so far tonight, setting a screen right there on the block. And what Notre Dame is accomplishing in their zone is really hard to do. They are covering the interior with Hills Hillman, but they're making it out to contest three-point shot. This is a very good three-point shooting team for Kim barnes Rico. You would think they could clear some space in the zone. They have not been able to do that. Last foul on Haley Brown as Gilbert delivers at the line. Now, coming into this game, first couple of games of the season, Michigan shooting 44% from distance, averaging 94 points per game, which is 16th best in the nation. But the Notre Dame defense keeping them down so far, just eight points in the first eight minutes. And another turnover. It's got to be frustrating for Kim Barnes Rico to see the same movie playing again from last season. Wolverines have to clean up the turnovers. And Michigan now has gone over four minutes without scoring a point. Drive by Peoples to no avail. Long passes across the court all the way around the horn. Always fumbled a little bit by Roush. You got to knock it off a very clean shot. You got to take that first early shot. I mean, you don't know if you take that dribble if you're going to get it again. And they had already been very unselfish, had Michigan on that possession. They moved it around, and then Roush dribbled right into a contested shot. Gilbert going to head right back to the free throw line. Roush picked up the foul on the other end. Tomorrow, two more men's college basketball games coming your way right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Start things off with Louisville hosting UNC Greensboro at 2 Eastern. Then it's Kent State at number 15, Virginia, at 6 Eastern time on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. So Inside and finally, Hillman. Well, it's been a while. And that's what Michigan's going to have to do. Look for early offense or work late in the shot clock. Yeah, I feel like they're playing a little fast and a little rushed. And when they get stops on this end of the floor, they can push and look to get to Nas Hillman before the zone sets up. There it is. Brunel with the contest, and I think they're going to get Sam for the personal foul. That's what you need to do if you are Michigan right now because... They look shaky and uncertain on the offensive end with all the turnovers, but if you can beat Notre Dame down the floor after a stop, Hillman is always the first player down in position waiting for that pass. Foul was indeed on Brunel, so here's Nas at the line, where she's now 8 of 11 in this young season. Hillman, a very, very special player. In fact, was... One of the picks for preseason Big Ten Player of the Year. The Big Ten should be interesting this year. Maryland had been dominating since they came into the league, but you're looking at teams like Northwestern. How about Indiana being the preseason pick by the media and coaches in the Big Ten this year? Yeah, 
but Terry Morton has done a really nice job at Indiana. Allie Patberg, who Notre Dame fans would be familiar with, has been outstanding for the Hoosiers. It's not often you see that Maryland's not picked as the favorite in the Big Ten. Well, Maryland had a lot of turnover with some transfers last year. We do have Angel Reese out of Baltimore, who's one of the most heralded freshmen in the country on the roster. So it'll be interesting in the Big Ten this year. Yeah, Northwestern will be really good too. Lindsey Pulliam is one of my favorite players to watch in the country. She's from Maryland, I believe. Probably. I'm not. Yes. She's not from PG County though. So don't even, <laughs> so don't even try to claim that. <laughs> Dilk with the pass inside, but Michigan getting a relatively good look, but. Leah Brown unable to finish. Leah Brown has been rather quiet so far for Michigan. The Nebraska transfer just two points so far, but she uh, stepped in, was immediately eligible, and she killed Michigan when she played for Nebraska and has fit right in on this team. Notre Dame gains off to a 2-0 start. And welcome back, Tiana Monacahia. So happy that the point guard who's been battling breast cancer for the last couple of years is back playing for the Orange. Oh, man. Everyone is happy. Best story in college basketball this season. I can imagine being 23 years old, diagnosed with stage 2 breast cancer. But Tiana Monacahia is a fighter. And she is back on the court. Michigan's on the board with a three. And they have tied it just like that. That three hit by Maddie Nolan, one of the Indiana natives we told you about. Notre Dame is 10 of its final 11 shots in the first quarter, allowing Michigan to catch up. But that's a sweet look. Peoples with the finish. He's a half dozen. Yes, and beautiful pass by Westbelt. Looked like her sister making that pass from the high post from the elbow area. Count it. And Michigan, after a slow start, getting things going. They've been more patient. Good ball movement on the offensive end. And they've also looked to Nas Hillman early on. They're finding enough space. And when you're small on that help side, Abby Prohaska doesn't have a shot because she does not have the length to contest that shot into the basket by Nas Hillman. And even if you're 6'7", Nas is taking it in. <laughs> Prohaska called for the foul that leads to Hillman's three-point play. This is the first time Michigan has led in this game. Notre Dame led by as many as seven. It was 15 to eight at one point. Now it's a 10 to two Michigan run that has ended. Basket by you, Maddie Westbell. I'll tell you this, as Brown gets an easy one. Maddie Westveld is as savvy in the high post with her decision making and her scoring as any player you've seen so far this season. And she's only a freshman. Last two possessions, two very different plays, makes a read for the pass, and that time calls her own number. 34 and White is special. And just a true freshman. And her teammates talk about how mature she is, that she both looks and plays like a, an upperclassman. Maybe. Blanketed by Dilk, can't get the shot off. And then the up and under. The basket converted and a foul. Peoples doing some damage. Anaya Peoples is a Swiss Army knife because you'll see her play point guard, but she can also do this. She has the size and body to go down low, has beautiful post moves. She told us yesterday that you know, as a young girl, she grew up playing point guard, and she said she wasn't very tall, but then she hit this growth spurt. So, of course, what do coaches say? They put you in the post. So she already had the guard experience, then had to move to the post. She is uh, as versatile as any player you'll see in the country. Michigan getting things going, as is uh, Leah Brown. Yeah, the thing about Peoples at only 5'10", led the team in rebounding last season. How about double doubles in her first two games? She's trying to become the first Notre Dame guard ever to have three straight double doubles. She's a heck of a rebounder. You have to know where she is at all times. Eight points and surprisingly no rebounds yet for Peoples in this game. Nice ball movement, Prohaska finishes. And how about Westbeld again? Maddie Westbeld has been unstoppable in the last few possessions from the high post. Notre Dame bounces back on top by one. Johnson coming back from injury, rolls it in. 
great to see you, Ken Ray Johnson, back out on the floor. Was nursing a, a sore knee. She's had some ACLs, had a couple actually, one in high school and one her freshman year at Michigan. But she is probably the most important player on the court for Kim barnes Rico because she has experience. She's an extension of the coach. She plays extremely hard on both ends of the floor. Her length on defense is very important and, and just is a player that is, is very coachable and a delight to watch. She's not going to blow you away with her numbers, but it's all the other little things that you talked about, the intangibles that has made Johnson invaluable. Got another year of eligibility back because of the knee injury in her freshman season. Bucket by Mabry. And then Michigan. Everybody going back and forth. The lead ping-ponging back and forth. And a little more pace to this game. You know, coming in, we knew pace would be important because the Irish want to play fast. They've actually been very good in the half court early on in this one. And Michigan's finding success in their transition offense. I thought they would want to bang it in the half court. Broke got the last basket. Michigan six for six from the floor in this quarter. Notre Dame's only missed one shot. Here comes the shot clock getting really skinny. Mabry has to throw up the desperation. Dilk. But good job by Notre Dame to get back on defense. Yeah, Mabry kept that one in her hands a little too long. You got to move the ball, find the open player. Johnson to Brown, Westbelt with good defense, and then Haley Brown somehow able to get around and draw the foul. Westbelt looked like she had her bottled up. Might be the second on we on Maddie Westbelt if that's called on her. There were two players there, but Haley Brown can hit the three. She can also power it up in the post. Wolverines showing some life. Breast cancer had the double mastectomy, but she is back and better than ever. She's such a dynamic player with China. So great to see her on the floor. Syracuse all-time leader in assist. And again, you know, I mean, everyone has been touched by cancer in some way, but I couldn't imagine being she was actually 24 years old when she was diagnosed and missed all of last season. Obviously, chemotherapy treatments and is now just inspiring all of us with her strength and her courage. And we ask you during these challenging times, ESPN and the V Foundation's fight against cancer has not stopped. If you're able, please support cancer research visiting v.org slash donate. 100% every penny of what you give goes to cancer research. And any amount certainly would be appreciated. As the China said, we've all of us been touched by this disease in some way or another, and the Jimmy V Fund has been terrific throughout the years. Haley Brown got the last bucket for Michigan. And a Ken Ray Johnson has been hit by a couple of tough screens. She's the defender on Dara Mabry, and she came up the court really slow. An outside shot by Brown ticks off the rim. Caitlin Gilbert double dribbles, a little awkward on her path to the basket. She turns it over. If you're just joining us, both uh, Caitlin Gilbert and Sam Brunel making their season debuts tonight for the Fighting Irish as they are coming back. Brunel had a nagging foot injury. Gilbert back in the lineup. Sam Brunel and Caitlin Gilbert, one and two in freshman scoring last season for Notre Dame, both all ACC freshman team. Two huge pieces added back to Neil Ivy's squad. Gilbert called for her first personal foul. And last year that Notre Dame, the very unusual season for them. They were 13 and 18, just 8 and 10 in the league. Had a strong finish to the regular season, but then lost to Pitt in the ACC tournament. And the NCAA tournament called off because of COVID. So... A very unusual year for the Irish and the freshmen, though, really. Especially, boy, you talk about Brunel and Peoples. True freshmen, so much was put on them last year. Well, they had to play a lot of minutes, and, and that will be a good thing this season, but Notre Dame definitely took their bumps, and you had you know new pieces like Destiny Walker and Marta Sneezik and you know, just basically a cast of players that had never played together. And Mickey Vaughn actually ended up being the hero of that team and the player that pulled everyone together. Can't wait to see her back out on the court. And Vaughn had ACL surgery last spring and 
They're hoping to get her back relatively soon. Will be a much deeper Notre Dame squad this year. It will scrum on the floor. Possession arrow points towards the Irish. A rest belt coming in, fitting right in with this team. Orniel Ivy. Sam Brunell with two personal fouls now, so Westveld going to get some extended minutes here for the remainder of the second quarter. Peoples goes out. Had her season cut short with a shoulder injury last year. Had some surgery, but looks to be in fine form. Peoples was also having a fantastic year. The numbers bear it. She was averaging almost a double-double when she went out with that injury, Pam. Yeah. West Belt doesn't quite go in. Haley Brown able to get the outlet. Maddie Nolan able to back up. There's Hillman at the high post guarded by Mabry, but she passes out of it. You got to move her around. That's the only way you're going to get the ball to her. But again, good patience by Michigan, and you look at all the crowding down low around Nas Hillman. That's how the Wolverines are getting these shots. It was a 7-0 Michigan run. They lead now by six over the Irish. And Notre Dame really feasted off turnovers early. Remember the first five minutes, Notre Dame converted Michigan turnovers into seven points. They have not scored a single point off turnovers since. Funny how taking care of the basketball works out. It helps, you know. <laughs> Got to have the basketball to score it. And Dora Rahim out, Prohaska in for Notre Dame. And another turnover, Haley Brown able to grab it. Gilk, the floor general, setting things up. Now they try to get it inside. Tough pass off the double team. Leah Brown somehow found Hillman, who drew the foul. And they will do that. Michigan will force the ball into Nas Hillman, but I said in the open, she has the best hands in the nation. But look at the high post touch by Hillman. And then when she dives, look at all three defenders are there. And that's how Brown gets open for that jump shot, because on that movement of Hillman from high to low, the defense goes with her. Haska called for the foul. Hillman does a good job of getting to the free throw line. She's into double figures now. The best hands in the nation, LaChina, you say, with Nas. I mean, I'll put her up against anyone because she has to make the most difficult catches. She's undersized in the post at 6'2". So she's got long arms around her, always several defenders there, but she just makes some really incredibly impossible catches. Yeah, and, and it's what a luxury too when you are making that pass into the post to know that most of the time she's gonna be able to grab that pass. I thought that was a turnover. <laughs> I, I definitely thought that was a turnover when they were looking to make that pass. Uh, Notre Dame draws the foul. Notre Dame's gone about four minutes now without scoring. Hillman gets a much deserved rest over on the bench. Hillman with 11 points and five boards. Notre Dame just two of six from the free throw line. That's not going to get it done. That last foul, by the way, was on Maddie Nolan for the Wolverines, her first. And you would have to expect that there'd be some bumps and some challenges with Gilbert getting back into the lineup. Brunel, the rotation's different. There's still a lot of moving pieces for Notre Dame, and it's going to take some time for them to really find that continuity, that chemistry, and that consistency when you've had players out. An offensive foul called. There's a turnover. They got Dilk for that. It's Dilk lowers that shoulder and absolutely Looked like she traveled right there. And a foul called on Dilk. Mabry gave it a nice little. She did. She sold yeah. it. I, I would like call it, it travel. <laughs> nice bell posting up strongly, but the turnaround no good. Gets her own miss. 
Her last three shots have been contested. Michigan doing a nice job of covering her up. Nolan passes out of trouble. Inside. Hillman left it short. Contact with no foul. Who else? Anaya Peoples, who has that same build and toughness as Nas Hillman. And here's Destiny Walker, a name we have not called often in this one early. In fact, that's her first basket of the game. Had only taken two shots before that, but Michigan comes right back and counters with a three of their own. Haley Brown has had a really nice first half. She's got 10 points. I mentioned how important the Kenray Johnson is to this team. Well, Haley Brown, I would put her up there as well because of, again, her experience and having been in the battles. Brown has started every game in which she has played and had the defensive stop on this end against Peoples. Timeout called by Michigan, and Coach Barnes of Rico is fired up. There has been a 14-point swing in this game. Michigan trailed by seven early now, up by seven. Pam Ward and LaChina Robinson joining you. Kim Barnes of Rico trying to beat Notre Dame for the very first time. Irish have won the last four. Michigan's last win in the series back in 2008. You mentioned something earlier, Pam, as Peoples gets a steal. Transition offense for the Irish. That's what the L. Ivy wants to see. But you mentioned something early, the number of Indiana players there are for Michigan on Kim Barnes' Rico roster. I mean, this is a homecoming of sorts for them. And they grew up, I'm sure, as young girls hearing about Notre Dame women's basketball and inspired by you know, the Ruth Rileys and the DL Ivies the way we were. And again, good defense by the Irish. And how about the freshman Westbelt? The full length of the court for the finish. Catherine Westbelt gets the ball. 6-3, freshman. Takes a bump, finds the angle. How fun is she to watch? Wow. Maddie Westbeld, Catherine's younger sister. So we have Westbeld and a Mabry both playing on this team. And I saw something that, that was posted on Twitter where someone asked Maddie Westbeld and Dara Mabry who would win in a two-on-two -two contest but would it, you know, between any of the other Mabrys. Uh, I, I believe it was Michaela and Kat and Maddie and Dara just looked at each other and said, of course we would win. You'd be in no contest. <laughs> they actually laughed at the question. That needs to happen ASAP. <laughs> Has to happen. Hillman cleaning up but could not get it to fall. Notre Dame down seven now can tie it or take the lead. What a run this has been out of that last timeout. Gilbert can't get it. Haley Brown able to grab yet another rebound. And now Michigan tries to settle the ball a little bit. Amy Dilk not in the game right now. The starting point guard. Daniel Roush, number 23, handling it as the shot clock goes into single digits. Notre Dame in their zone defense. Michigan couldn't get the three to go. Can Notre Dame convert? This should be the last possession of the half. Mabry dribbled into traffic, and the ball is tied up. Possession arrow in favor of Michigan. Just under three seconds left to go. So Notre Dame finishes with a 9-3 run to get Miami of Ohio. Michigan comes in 2-0 with wins over Central Michigan and Oakland, which is right outside of Detroit. Dara Mabry can't get one to fall. And Leah Brown brings the ball up. The Nebraska transfer gets it over to Dilk. Her runner won't bounce in. End-to-end -end action and a block on the other end by Leah Brown to deny Peoples. And that was an incredible pass by Peoples to Destiny Walker. But no go, says Leah Brown. And here go the Wolverines on the board. Leah Brown has just fit right in after coming over from Nebraska. 
Must be nice Let's to have some family, have a little bit of crowd noise there for the Wolverines. And the whistle as Peoples hits the deck. Notre Dame is allowing family members to attend home games this season. Whereas Michigan is not allowed any fans, even family members cannot attend. That is a directive from the state of Michigan trying to keep the COVID pandemic as quiet as possible. Last foul on Leah Brown. And there's some of the family members who have come out all wearing masks and staying in their little family groups. A fan had a nice WNBA orange hoodie on back there, which I am. Everyone, everyone wearing the orange hoodie. <laughs> Why not? It's the hottest piece of clothing in professional sports. Still. Destiny Walker delivering at the free throw line. Outside shot. Hey, Johnson, that must feel good to get the three. A grab from Toledo coming back after missing the last game with a sore knee. And that was created by Dilk. I mean, she took the baseline and, and thread the needle on that pass. Six assists for Amy Dilk. And how about an answer for the Irish? That was Westfeld. Dilk trying to get it into him, and he was quickly triple teamed. Westbelt sticking her hands in there along with Prohaska. Great job by the Irish. We, we talked about it. Hillman has to be the center of attention for any scout. And that time they did, they did a good job. Well, you know where the ball is going. But what can you do once it gets there? And Notre Dame wasn't able to disrupt Nas Hillman once she caught the ball in the first half. That was a better job of getting there and bottling her up. Dilk got some space but couldn't get the ball to roll in. Prohaska who missed all of last year. She had blood clots in both of her lungs. Very scary, but doing well. Medication handling that. And it's Westbelt again. Real smooth to the basket by Westbelt. And how about the run by Leah Brown? The transfer from Nebraska has been a spark in this game, beating everyone down the floor. We saw the defense earlier recovering on the block, and right here, collects it, gets to the hoop, takes a little contact, gets it to go. Westbelt called for the foul, and it was interesting talking to head coach Kim barnes Rico when she originally told him that Leah Brown, who, by the way, called Coach Rico and said she wanted to play in Ann Arbor, and the players were like, what do you mean? We have to love her now? Because they hated her when she was an opponent because she torched them. Well, she was... Averaging 14 points per game and, and putting up some pretty hefty numbers. So you can understand why, but she has fit right in so well. Kim barnes Rico telling us she has just molded to whatever this team has needed. And in particular, how she has gotten her teammates involved with her passing. It has really fit in. The chemistry not disrupted at all. Brown was the sixth player of the year last year for Nebraska. And some of the players were concerned because Leah was more of a scorer on the Nebraska team, but now, as she puts up another three, that one off the mark, that'll be a foul on Johnson. But Leah Brown coming in, not wanting to come in and be the top scorer, but basically saying, I will do whatever it takes to help everybody else out. So it's been a great fit, and she still has another year of eligibility after this season. That's why Kim barnes Rico feels like this is probably the most experienced team she's had because you add a junior to the mix with that immediate eligibility that's been in some battles that definitely knows the Big Ten very well. Johnson, who is still out there playing with three personal fouls, forces that turnover for Michigan. Outside shot, short by Dilk. Mabry, why not? <laughs> she gets it up so quickly. That's where Dara Mabry is, is most dangerous, is in a handoff situation or a flip back pass because good luck getting out there to contest. That is her second three of the night. Transfer from Virginia Tech, a Ken Ray Johnson. Boy, I don't know how a Ken Ray got that basket up and in. Had to be two or three defenders to get to the rack. 
Both teams off to good starts offensively here in the third quarter. Michigan in their man-to-man, -man, running a little motion, motion action here for Notre Dame. Mabry with the miss. Hillman away from the basket, gets it over to Kenray Johnson, and nobody checked Andy Delk. Delk, the junior from Carmel, Indiana. With her sixth point of the game, also has seven assists. Notre Dame just working off of the high post action. And you were about to say it, Pam. Peoples is so good at using her body, her strength. A lot of interchangeable pieces because of the versatility of this Notre Dame team. Yeah, you could just see her down on the block just working and just to get enough space, working hard to get open, and then the nice move for the finish for Peoples. Great back and forth action here. How about the Mabry? Another one for three. Sometimes at some places, it depends. So if your credit card's not Apple Card, maybe it should be. Did you get a Strusel Top Blueberry Muffin because it's a special day? Or is it a special day because you got a Strusel Top Blueberry Muffin? Meet the new bakery sweets at McDonald's. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Coming up on Saturday, another triple header on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Start things off with Western Carolina and North Carolina, then Georgia Tech, NC State, and then prime time, it's Miami and Duke in our ACC Network primetime matchup presented by Geico. Pam Ward and LaChina Robinson joining you. And we anticipated a game much like this one, a close game between Michigan and Notre Dame, both teams getting their severest tests so far early on this season. Speaking of anticipation, Westveld almost had a steal on that possession in their zone defense out of the timeout. On the L. Ivy, the first year head coach, her third game as a head coach of Notre Dame. Leah Brown. Guarded by Gilbert out on the perimeter. Amy Dilk is not in the game. She is normally got the ball in her hands at that point guard spot. Let's see if the Wolverines can make something happen. Whistle with five seconds left on the shot clock. Amy Brown with a nice offensive game from Michigan. She's got 13 points to lead all scorers. There's Dilk, number one, on the bench. One thing we heard Muffet McGraw talking about at the half was three-point shots, and Michigan has not really been blowing us away with their three-point percentage, four for 13, but you know it's going to be an important basket to make in order to keep that offense working. Now coming in on the season, their first two games, blowout wins. They, they were shooting 44% from distance, but a different story with Notre Dame's defense tonight. In a zone. A lot, very often, which is, is not easy to do. To take away the three when you're playing a zone. I mean, that's the reason why people shoot threes against zones. Roy Hillman had to throw up that jumper as the shot clock was winding down. Mabry, little floater this time. Always looking to be aggressive is Dara Mabry. I love that about her mindset. She's not a pass in, in the pocket point guard. She wants to score it, loves to mix it up. Mabry, by the way, not was recruited by, by Notre Dame coming out of high school, but there was just one scholarship left. Haley Brown does it again. But Mabry is, according to Coach Ivy, is where she always should have been. She's where she belongs on the campus at Notre Dame now after playing her first two years at Virginia Tech. When I say point guard, I mean, she's not like a true point in terms of passing. She's more of a scoring point guard. Hayes will sometimes come in off the bench, but she's only a freshman. She is the true point guard for Neil Ivey's team. Hayes has not gotten onto the court so far tonight for the Irish. And that's an offensive foul. 
Boy, Haley Brown is working incredibly hard on both ends of the floor. You mentioned her scoring a moment ago, but here she just drops back. Perfect anticipation outside of the restricted area. When I was drawing up my notes on Haley Brown, I was thinking, you know, like about her importance and, and how do you even put it into words? I mean, she started every game of her career that she's been eligible to play and that she wasn't injured. And she's just their X factor, Pam. Does a little bit of everything. Good size at 6-1, now a senior. Inside pass, boy. That might have been too unselfish for Leah Brown. She had a nice mid-range jumper, but tried to get it inside to Hillman. That's the first turnover of the quarter for Michigan. And the jumper, Amira Abdul Rahim, one of the four true freshmen on the squad. That's her first basket. And we've seen her run the floor and get layups, easy buckets. Hillman will get to the free throw line. But I didn't know that Abdul Rahim had the face up jump shot as well. That can be dangerous on offense if you have a player that you know can get to the rim but can also face up 6 3. She actually reminds me a little bit of Brianna Turner in terms of just how well she runs the floor. Sam Brunel heads to the bench with three personal fouls. Good look at Abdur Rahim, the freshman from Marietta, Georgia. Hillman back at the free throw line yet again, where she has not missed. Back Michigan, nine for nine from the free throw line as a team. Hillman has seven of those nine. I mentioned Destiny Walker's been quiet. Leah Brown has done a nice job on her using her length to cover up Walker. We came into the game talking about how important she was, but you have to credit Michigan that they knew that as well. And they have taken her out of the mix on the offensive end. Walker had 27 points in their matchup last season. So you better believe Kim Barnes-Rico came into tonight's game saying we have to limit her impact. Yeah, those 27 points, a career high for Walker. Johnson gets a break for Michigan after she committed her fourth foul. And that's important because Ken Ray Johnson has been the player they've relied on to give Dara Mabry trouble. I mean, she has been hit by screen. She has been working very hard all evening to keep Dara Mabry out of a rhythm. So we'll have to keep an eye on Johnson if she can still impact this game aggressively the way she wants to down the stretch. And now Johnson on the bench with the four personal fouls. Nas is working so hard on the backside of that zone, trying to create an opening. Offensive rebound taken down by Ali Campbell, a freshman from Altoona, Pennsylvania, number 23 in white. The LIB continues to tinker with her lineup. I'll definitely try to get people's more look. She has looked like the most confident player on the offensive end. In fact, she can do this as well. We saw her score down low. She will play some backup point guard when needed. And they don't get the shot off. Good defense that time by the Wolverines. First quarter coming to a close. Michigan led by two at the half. Hillman sets up down on the low block. Inside, Haley Brown just could not get it to fall. And now the shot clock is off for the Irish.
people. Indeed, handling the point right now. And this may be the quarterback keeper for Peoples <laughs> to take Dilk to the rack. Yep. Called her own number and got fouled on the jumper. Right up until that foul, Dilk had done a nice job. I thought Peoples might be able to blow right by her, but Dilk does everything right until she does that. Fouls the jump shooter. That is three fouls on Dilk. Peoples one out of two. And the third quarter comes to a close. Michigan as many as seven early in the first quarter. And they've been hanging on to the second half lead. Darren Mabry and the rest of the Irish. Mabry with 12 points so far to lead her team in scoring. Haley Brown with a nice game, 16 points and five rebounds for the Wolverines. The difference in this game has really been turnovers. I mean, Michigan has two points on Notre Dame turnovers, and Notre Dame has 14 points off Michigan turnovers. Good way to start for Maddie Westfeld. And Michigan has found a way. Every time Notre Dame makes a run, they have made a play, especially Haley Brown. I mean, she has turned it on. Leah Brown was wide open and dribbled into the lane and drew the foul. The Browns, Haley Brown and Leah Brown. <laughs> really getting it for done. 25 points. Last foul was on Peoples for Notre Dame. And Leah gets them both. Driving down the lane. A great finish for Peoples. There has really been no answer for her. You don't know how to defend her because she's too big for a guard, but she's too quick for a post. At 5'10", and has a very high basketball IQ. So she is going to make the right read nine times out of 10. And there she has Nas Hillman on her, who is 6'2", but doesn't have the quick that Peoples has. Yeah, matchup difficulty to say the least for Peoples, who at the time of her injury last year led all ACC freshmen in rebounding field goal percentage steals and was second in points per game behind Sam Brunel for freshman before she went out with a shoulder injury. Hillman back in the on the line. Wellspeld has picked up her fourth personal foul for the Irish. And that's going to force Brunel to have to come into the game, keeping in mind that she and Caitlin Gilbert are just returning. They have not played this season, so this is an important time for them to be in the game and not quite have a rhythm. And speaking of which, there's Sam Brunel with the travel. Both Brunel and Gilbert making their season debuts this evening, coming off the bench for the Irish. West Belt on the bench, now with the four personals. Leah Brown rims it out, and Brunel comes down with it. This is the kind of lineup that Neil Ivey can put on the floor, where Sam Brunel is at the five position. A lot of versatility, a lot of perimeter game, all out on the floor at once. And Brunel's off on that shot. Yep, she popped out and missed the jumper. And just three points on the evening. Haley Brown, how a night. She just knows where to find the gaps. And when you play with Nas Hillman, if you can find the open spot, because the defense is always going to have one foot pointed towards Nas, you're going to get some jumpers to knock down. Yeah, she hurt Notre Dame last year with 15 points and six rebounds, has 18 so far tonight. People's got a defender on her back, smaller. 
Yep, Actually taller, Dill. but she's got a guard on her. And Dill picks up the foul. Yep, Dill bumped her. And that will be four personal fouls on Dilk. For both Dilk and Johnson with four apiece. And Anaya Peoples, seven for ten from the field. Keep feeding her. Well, until she just threw it over. Of course, I jinxed her, right? <laughs> just turned it over. Threw it away. So the ball goes back to the Wolverines. So the Michigan fans, it must be the Dilk family. Got a number one jersey. Amy from Carmel, Indiana. The overload here against the zone by Michigan. And they get and it. The, yeah, Maddie Nolan he just got into the game and nailed it. That is a 7-0 run for the Michigan Wolverines. Three-pointer by number three. It's the lead to one. Just under seven and a half minutes left to go. Maddie Nolan hitting that big three right before the break. Take a look at the overload on the zone here by Michigan. They're going to get four players, almost five, on one side of the floor. You see Nas Hillman posting up down low, double zero. That's your concern. Sam Brunel needs to be on the top side of that so she can help and get out. Or Peoples has to hustle over and get Nolan for that three. But credit Nolan, who made a nice pump fake and created some space for that shot. That is Maddie's second three of the night. Nolan, another one of the Indiana players for Michigan with a nice homecoming so far. Leah Brown has just picked up her third personal foul for the Wolverines. And Leah Brown's in the game, Nolan's in the game, Dilk's in the game, Noah Kenbray Johnson. So those three are holding it down on the perimeter. And Destiny Walker, just as I say that, we'll get to the free throw line. Dilk in there with the four personal fouls. And Kenbray Johnson with four fouls continues to be on the bench. That last foul was on Maddie Nolan. Her third. Oh, there actually Dilk is on the bench as well. And another whistle. Well, Nolan picks up a couple of quick ones. She joins Dilk and Johnson on the bench with the four personal fouls. And Johnson comes in, one of those with the four. How can Barnes Rico manages those fouls? down the stretch of this game will be important because we saw a couple possessions where Dilk was not on the court and they did not go extremely well for Michigan. So let's see who they go to here to get the offense moving. Destiny Walker with two free throws. We remind you after our college basketball doubleheader tonight, the all ACC team has a complete breakdown of both games as well as an interview with coaches and players 10 Eastern time. Just keep it right here on the ACC network or you can catch it on the ESPN app. Henry Johnson right back into the game and buries one. Nice look at the short corner. Michigan's doing a good job uh, against Notre Dame's zone of just finding the open spaces. We've seen Haley Brown knock down some shots from the high post, the overload for the three, and that time Johnson from the short corner. And how about Sam Brunel? Welcome back. Yeah, that was a much needed three for Brunel who had not scored since she hit a three back in the first quarter. Inside six minutes to go, just a five-point advantage now for the Wolverines. Risky pass cross court, but Leah Brown's able to corral it. Hillman, three players around her as usual. And Leah Brown passes up the jumper, instead drives and draws another foul. I was thinking the same thing, Pam. 
They were moving it around the horn. They got it out of the triple team, which if you're Notre Dame, if you're going to send three players to a triple team, the ball cannot get out of there because once it does, it's going to be extremely hard to recover, and they better be glad that Brown did not take that initial three because she had a look at it. She sure did. She appeared to be wide open. First foul on Destiny Walker, and Leah Brown heads back to the free throw line. Free throws have been one of the differences in this game. Michigan as a team is 13 for 13. Notre Dame has missed six of its 14 shots. That is from the line. That's the first free throw miss for the Wolverines. Yeah, we thought turnovers would be the deciding factor in this game. It could be free throws. Well, one out of two. Gets the lead back up to six. Now Mabry back at the point. Brunel, boy, she's not shy. That one was wide left, and Hillman got another rebound. But they like that set because you're forcing Haley Brown to have to get out and guard around a screen. And Brunel is very capable of hitting it. And then Brunel gives Hillman a little push in the back to pick up the foul. <laughs> And Brunell is down there trying to do what she can against Nas Hillman, but keep in mind, she is not your average back-to-the-basket post. I mean, she can function all over the court, but when you're playing against a post player like Nas Hillman, who is just so savvy at knowing how to create angles and how to put the defense in a bad position, it is tough to refrain from making contact with her. Is it Fourth foul on Brunel sends her to the bench. Meanwhile, Hillman, 10 for 10 from the line. Wow. And she's going to get there. For 11. And that's, that's amazing, right, because she's going to get there a lot because of the way she plays. She'll get fouled a lot. And if she can convert like that, it's just money. Westbell guarded by Hillman. Picked up her dribble. Five minutes to go. Westbell, a little bit of space over Brown, but it would not float in. Dilk, the guard, comes up with the rebound. One of the concerns coming into this game was that Notre Dame's half-court offense had not quite caught up to its transition offense. And so this is what they need to do. Try to get out and run because, again, they've got some new pieces on the floor, some young players that haven't played together and been in different situations. And it's been tough for them to find their offense consistently. Welcome back. Just about four and a half minutes left to go. Michigan clinging to an eight-point lead, dealing with some foul trouble. You see they have three players playing with four fouls. Notre Dame has a couple who have picked up four personals. And Notre Dame, out of the timeout, boy, throws the ball away. Not what you want to see if you are Neil Ivium. We saw her drawing up plays with Coquise Washington. And they scramble the possession. And turnover's a big point in this game as well. Michigan only has two in the second half. Johnson with a huge three-pointer. And the first double-digit lead for either team tonight of Kenray Johnson with her second three of the evening. Destiny Walker cannot answer. But the rebound taken down by Westbelt, and another foul has been called. There's started to be a lot more balance to the offense for Michigan than just Nas Hillman. And against the zone, that little screen there by Brown in a slow rotation out to Johnson. And that's a big shot for momentum. That's spelled with the miss at the line. It was the second foul on Haley Brown, who has been terrific this evening for Michigan. It looks like Notre Dame is now in a man-to-man -man defense, changing it up. Playing mostly zone tonight. 
Tillman, that's a nice pass by Johnson. Hit her right where she needed to be. And that's why you play zone, because it's too easy for Michigan to get the ball to Nas Hillman in a man-to-man. -man. Westbelt sticks with it. And Notre Dame needs some stops down 10 as we approach three minutes to go. And a timeout. Taken by Michigan. A change in defense by Neil Ivey after Michigan hit that three. It's a man-to-man, -man and what that means is one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Nas Hillman. No quick double team, no triple. And anytime there's one defender and she's got him on their back, double zero, and Mays and Blue will put it in the cup. Yeah, she must have been uh, just anxious to get that in. Look, she's uh, averaged a double-double coming into tonight. 19 points and eight boards for the, the junior from Cleveland. She also has three blocks on the night. And also, to make matters worse for Notre Dame, on that defensive possession, Brunel was one-on-one -on -one with Hillman, and Sam is playing with four personal fouls. I really hope Nas Hillman gets the recognition she deserves this season on the national level because her game is not flashy. She just does all the dirty work on the interior. But I don't know if you're going to find an undersized post in the nation that is as accurate as she is around the basket that causes as many matchup problems as she does. You have to know where she is on the floor. And she has opened up opportunities for her teammates tonight because of how dominant she is. And she's dominant, but it seems to be sort of in a quiet way. So she, she doesn't need a lot of touches. <laughs> yeah. No, no. She's very, very efficient. And Notre Dame just turned the ball right back over. That is Sam Brunel's fifth foul. So Brunel's debut this season ends with just under three minutes left to go. Coming back, she did have six points on the afternoon or the evening. And just keep in mind, in our conversation with Niel Ivey, she told us that Sam Brunel had not been fully practicing. I mean, she was still working her way back. She had not been on in a lot of full court five on five situations. So she is still, again, working her way back and getting her feel along with Gilbert. I mean, a couple of players that had not been on the floor. This is a big game for them to be playing the amount of minutes, but you gotta get them in, you gotta work them in. Yeah, certainly it is a tough team to make a debut against. Hillman was able to gather it, but then blew it and still was able to get a rebound. Michigan's perseverance hasn't paid off yet as Mabry knocked it out of Hillman's hands. And Michigan's they can experience. all laugh about this. Yeah. yeah, their experience is really starting to show itself. I mean, Nas Hillman's a junior. And then you've got Leah Brown, who's a junior. And then you've got Haley Brown, a senior, a player that has made major plays. Amy Dilk, this looks like a team that just has some synergy about them and, and, and a lot of confidence. And don't forget about a Ken Ray Johnson, who's a fifth year. So a lot of experience there as well. Mabry's foul put Hillman back on the line. And that's a new career high for Nas with 12 made free throws. Make it 12 out of 13 on the night for Hillman. And one thing that Kim barnes Arepa, the head coach for Michigan, told us is that Notre Dame is a team that is just going to get better as the year goes along because of so many new pieces that you mentioned. And you have some key players coming back from injury like Gilbert and Brunel. They, are going to get Michaela Vaughn back at some point. And that's just too easy. But Johnson was called for steps. I thought she was good on that. She said, I took two. I'm with you, Ken Ray. I didn't think that was a travel. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's close, but that was more like three steps, <laughs> not two. Yeah. You can get away with that in the NBA, but not here. Mabry. One thing that, you know, Michigan did, Pam, is when they started hitting shots, they could get back and set up their defense. I mean, they were a much better defensive team 
when they were able to get back and set up and weren't turning the ball over. They took away transition opportunities for Notre Dame, and we know that they want to run. Nice finish with the offhand for Leah Brown. And in Michigan, less than a minute away from breaking a four-game losing streak to the Irish. They've not beaten them in 12 years. And just going back to your point about the turnovers, LaChina, in the first five minutes of the game, Notre Dame had scored seven points off Michigan turnovers. In the subsequent minutes since the first five in, only seven total off turnovers. So holding on to the basketball has really paid off for Michigan. That was a huge story last year when Notre Dame scored 32 points off their turnovers. Yeah, they turned it up. I mean, Michigan just, it seemed like after that first five minute stretch, just kind of woke up and were making better decisions with the ball, finding better angles and finding success against Notre Dame's defense. Westbelt hit one of two from the line after Hillman's personal foul. And that's a little bunny hop underneath for Hillman, who's going to finish with another double-double, 20 points, 12 of them from the line, along with 11 rebounds, three blocks for Nas Hillman. And you're right, America needs to know about that player. She's a really, really good player for Michigan. Well, Notre Dame's going to fall to one and two on the season. Their next game against IUPUI before they head into ACC play against Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech. So what do you think Notre Dame's going to be talking about after this game with China? Well, I think they're going to be trying to get their full team out of the court and, and run through their offense. I don't want to take any credit away from what Michigan has done. They were the tougher team tonight. They made the big plays when they needed to. But uh, this is a Notre Dame team that shot 39% from the field. I think they will be better than that offensively once they get their full arsenal back and can get players with some reps all on the floor together. So Michigan outscored Notre Dame by seven in that fourth quarter, and you can dance in Ann Arbor because Michigan has beaten Notre Dame for the first time.